HP reached out and asked me if I wanted to do a video on one of their computers. They showed me their site and said I could pick whichever one I wanted to borrow for free for a bit. Now, we have Omen crazy gaming laptops and desktops and all sorts of other stuff, but among all of those, I chose to check out this instead. Now, you might be confused, but the reason I picked to borrow this one is that honestly, I think it might be one of the best all-in-one computers you can buy under 750 bucks. Now off the bat, the performance specs on this are an AMD Ryzen 5, which according to a lot of other publications is on par, if not a little more powerful than the equivalent Intel i5, which either way will be more than enough processing power for plenty of everyday tasks like web browsing, office documents, media playing, etc. And the fact that that comes paired with a decent 16 gigs of RAM as standard means it'll be able to handle multiple tabs open and multitasking just fine. Compared to the eight gigs that you usually find in this price range paired with a much slower, even Celeron or Pentium processors that I honestly just would avoid in general as they're just frustrating to use even for normal tasks, at least in my opinion. The interesting addition though, performance wise, is that the AMD Vega 8 integrated GPU that's in here. Now, price-wise, it's similar to what you would find with Intel's integrated UHD 620 GPU, usually paired with the i5 CPU. But performance-wise, it's a different story. According to a lot of sites, the average boost in graphics performance can be as high as 81% better than that UHD 620. So we're talking much better performance for things that require images and videos to be processed on the screen. So, Let's see how that does in some benchmarks designed for just those things. And you can use that to compare it to other computers that you might be looking at whose scores you also have. Now, judging by these scores, I'd say you could even do some light gaming almost. It's for sure not a gaming PC you'd really have to start looking at a much higher price range for that. But if you're a parent and you're buying this for say, the living room shared setup situation for your kid to use occasionally, or you're a student looking to once in a while fire up a simpler game, you can probably play Minecraft and Fortnite, for example, well enough. Again, something you probably won't be able to do in another all-in-one computer under that 750 price tag. Now for the screen, it has a 23.8 inch 1080p panel, which isn't a high resolution, but that's expected from a computer in this price range. And it does, however, have pretty thin bezels on three sides of the frame. So that helps with it looking more modern and slick. Now, something else that isn't expected though about this screen is the fact that it comes with this anti-glare coating, which I actually love as it reduces glare and it makes for just a much more pleasant viewing experience. Oh, one other thing that's pretty uncommon in this price range. This has a touch screen, which is just honestly a nice bonus. Now above that screen, we actually have a Windows Hello enabled webcam. So you can log into the computer using your face, which is convenient. And here's what that webcam looks like and the microphones on the computer sound like. And it's actually a pretty decent webcam. It's a full 1080p webcam, which some even gaming laptops that are way more expensive don't even have. One last thing to note about that webcam though, is that it can also be pushed down to block it for those out there that are more privacy conscious and don't want the camera to be able to see anything when not in use. I also kind of just like the way it looks when it's down. It's like, I don't know, kind of cleaner, no? Sound quality wise, the speakers that sit in this grill under the screen are actually better than I expected as well. Here's how they sounded as well as what streaming video playback is like on the computer. You want to crash a plane, but not from the air. No such magic. Well, how big a plane? That part is a little dramatic. Not bad, which makes me feel like it might even work as like a media hub computer in your house as well. Speaking of that, another thing that it beats other all-in-ones with is the storage situation. Now it comes with a 256 gig M.2 SSD, which because of its faster speed and no moving parts is where Windows itself and all of your programs live by default so that they just open faster and perform better. But we also have a one terabyte hard drive, which gives you a ton of space to put whatever other movies, for example, photos, files, etc., on it without having to worry about running out. Which again, is more than any of the other computers I could really find in this price range. 
Now, another thing I actually didn't notice at first because it's hidden under the screen is an SD card slot so that you can use that to pull photos directly off your camera if you want, or even use it as a cheap way to upgrade some extra storage for the computer, like this 128 gig card for $20 or this 256 gig card for 40, and there's higher ones for higher prices as well, but I'll leave links below for those. Now for ports, we also have a decent amount of USB ports on the back, along with an ethernet port so that you can plug in directly to your router for faster internet speeds if you need that. But of course it also has Wi-Fi. And we also have an easier to access USB port here on the side next to the power button as well. Now, as this is an all-in-one computer, one of the beauties of that is that it comes with everything you need to get up and running. The monitor and computer are one and the same, but it also comes with a mouse and a keyboard in the box. Both of which are decent, actually, and I had no issues using them. But one of the downsides to me is that it comes with a wired mouse and keyboard, which means that two of those USB slots on the back are taken up by those. And frankly, the setup just doesn't look as clean as if it were wireless, of course. Now, not a big deal, as you might not care, and there are still plenty of other USB ports regardless. And you can also easily find Bluetooth mice and keyboards online for pretty cheap if you wanted. And the computer itself has Bluetooth 5.0, which means it'll be better at handling any Bluetooth accessories in general. And there you go. For all of these reasons I just mentioned, and the fact that I've done a ton of research on this already, this might be one of the best all-in-one computers you can get for under 750 bucks. Now, the configuration may vary depending on where you buy the computer, but I've even also seen some configurations that are a little bit lower than this that end up being a lot cheaper that might be worth checking out. Regardless, I will leave links below to all the different configurations and the best prices that I could find. Now, if you guys enjoyed that video, please thumbs up it or share it if you did. Also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like to see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next door to subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always, though, regardless, thanks for watching.